You are listening to the North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast. Thank you for downloading and subscribing. Coming to you virtually live from high atop the historic Raleigh building in beautiful downtown Raleigh. The NCF&B takes the listener behind the scenes to tell the stories of the people that contribute to the creation of the food and beverage community of North Carolina. And now, the misfits in the dish pit, the faces of the front. They are Max Trujillo and Matthew Weiss. Hello, and thank you for listening to the North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast. I am your co-host, Max Trujillo. Matthew Weiss is en route from Richmond, Virginia, all the way to our beloved Asheville, North Carolina. That's right. The North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast finally made their lazy asses all the way down to the hill country of Asheville, North Carolina. We are here because it's Chow Chow. It's the inaugural season, inaugural event of Chow Chow, which is a food and beverage. Uh, I mean, what? it's everything. It's, it's, it's like the greatest uh, food event you would think that would happen inside of a sleepy town like Asheville. Uh, you got chefs like Marijuana Ronnie. Katie Button, we saw Vivian Howard telling us all about pickles. The chef Stephen Goff is going to give a, a clinic tomorrow. Uh, we have so many different things happening, but today, as life just goes on and you just kind of bump into the people that you know, this food, food and beverage community, that's right, that's thunder if you're hearing it right now. <laughs> it's raining outside. And that laughter that you also heard is from a very tall, very big man, a previous guest of the show, Mr. Stefan Hubner, out there at dot 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 in CLT in Charlotte, North Carolina. Stefan, hello and welcome. Thank you for having us back, man. Yeah. Great to just bump into you. We were drinking some cocktails, having some Maker's Mark, a little food, and then like, hey man, let's do a little quick talk. Yeah. I even had, and not sponsor of the show, but Angostura Bitters made their new little soda with like yeah. lime, uh, poured over nice and neat on a uh, cold glass of Maker's Mark. I was like, oh, this is delicious. And, Pretty uh, solid for a one-on-one. Yeah. And if you can hear it in my voice, I've had a few of them already. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Stefan's not here alone. He is with Chef Daniel Wheeler, the exec chef of Dot Dot Dot, and Thea McCrary. <laughs> <laughs> she thought she wouldn't be announced or even no. like say anything on the podcast. But. Surprise. Surprise. But anyhow, the four of us are all sitting in our Airbnb, which is about two blocks away from the headquarters of Chow Chow that happens this whole weekend. It's like a four-day event. Daniel, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Uh, super cool event today. Nice little demo. Good response. And super stoked to have ran into you at the main yeah. tent at Maker's Mark. Yeah, it's cool. And even as I'm looking at you, you're wearing a PCG Piedmont Culinary Guild shirt, which of course we've we've had episodes about them as well. It's great camaraderie. It brings me back to Stefan right in the beginning of the NCFB. When we first started, we went to Charlotte and oh, it's weird. Lights are turning on and off in our Airbnb. I think it's <laughs> Either there's a ghost or the weather is doing something. But uh, when we first started the show, we decided, let's go down to Charlotte. Let's make it a big event. Let's really get in deep. We had a hotel room at the Dunhill. And that was fun. That was it was really a great cool. time. Yeah. Great and time. You, had, you were just leading Heist at the time. Yep. Constru- and, during construction of DOT. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was a pretty wild time. That was two years ago. Right. So catch us up a little bit. Since then... You've opened up dot dot dot, which is an amazing. It's, it's a private club, right? Private club, mostly because of the laws in North Carolina. We don't sell enough food compared to alcohol sales, so we have to be a private membership club. Ten bucks a year. Uh, it gets you allowed to bring in three guests. A lot of people assume we are just a cocktail bar. We also have a great American cuisine done with modern technique. A really great small plate restaurant yeah. along with it. Uh, we do do a lot of business pre and post. Dinner, we are really building our dinner crowd, which has been really, really nice. Daniel's killing it. Uh, we're just doing some really cool stuff. You know, at the two year mark, we're in our, we're a toddler now. Now we're starting to do some fun <laughs> stuff. Yeah, A lot more special events. Every month we're bringing in uh, a bar from other places in North Carolina oh. we have, and South Carolina. We just did Donnie Pratt from Golden Pineapple last week. Oh, We yeah. have Tate's from Winston-Salem next week. We have Robert from Alley 26 coming in in Durham. Rob Mariani, good yep. friend of ours. What a character, man. Love that dude. Oh, yeah. Uh, then we're also rocking uh, Adam from Whiskey Kitchen. He's coming. Oh, fantastic. Got Davy Jones from the Gin Joint Charleston coming up. So we're doing a lot of cool stuff on the That's bar cool. side along with the kitchen side. That uh, Really trying to expand what we do. 
uh, bring new things and new ideas to our guests and really just yeah. expand on what Dot's done the last few years, really start to spread our wings with it. You know, we're out here doing stuff at Chow Chow in Euphoria for Greenville and a lot more different events outside the bar yeah. to really start spreading the name. Well, that's part of this industry is it's not about just the, the, the four walls, your brick and mortar of what you do. It's it's about creating kind of a vibe, a, a community. You know, it's like, oh, we'll go to your place this time or we'll go to your place. And and you kind of pull it around. I recently, in, in kind of uh, thinking about food, since we have your chef right across from us, uh, I was in Nashville over the weekend, last weekend. I mean, I went to the Patterson House. Have you been to Amazing. Patterson? So good. So, oh, I was there God. for for three and a half days, and I went to the Patterson House three times. <laughs> did you get a chance to check out Catbird Seat? No. We, yeah, you got you got to make reservations dude, like yeah. three months in advance. Dude, it's yeah. so, oh Catbird's dope. Oh, yeah. so good. So if you're listening and like you're going to Nashville or you're thinking about going there in a couple months, make reservations now for Catbird Seat because it really is, as the name it's, would imply, it's the best place to be. It's the, the quintessential seat. like tasting room only like if you think McCrady's 10 years ago eight years ago like yeah. that's what Catbird Seed's putting out now like yeah. in modern day technique it is insane and that's like from what I understand they're doing they have uh, traveling chefs like they bring in a different chef for a season or a time like a few weeks a few months or whatever it might be and they rotate them out so a chef gets to live in Nashville for a little while which ain't too bad because that's a pretty cool town yep. Uh, but but the Patterson House is this little speakeasy that's just off the side of the catbird seat, and you can walk in it. You don't need a reservation. It still gets a little busy in there. You got to put your name down, and eventually you get a seat. But for anyone that's in like the Triangle, think Fox Liquor Bar, or you know Foundation, um, but even like Dot 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 and CLT or the Punch Room or something. But the thing I want to talk about, the thing that made the most sense to me, and this is where you come in, Daniel, is the menu was unbelievable and i think this is where we're headed with cocktail bars if you can throw down some food why not just why not just punch people in the face with flavor and just do it absolutely like, so so talk to us about what dot dot dot's doing regarding the food menu so the food menu at dot is super flavor forward simple delicious ingredients there's no hiding behind any kinds of tricks or techniques or like facade that you might find in other places I try to do simple food really well. Give uh, us like an example of, of what, what's what's something that's like, uh, you know, making you smile when you're on the line right now. So my my favorite dish on the line right now in our current fall menu is a dish that I did today at uh, Chow Chow. It is a North Carolina shrimp and Hoppin' John with a smoked tomato and Madeira gravy. Oh. Super simple. <laughs> All North Carolina ingredients. The tomatoes are from North Carolina. The Madeira is not necessarily from North Carolina, but it is a high quality. North, <laughs> it is a high quality. It has Madeira. to be from Madeira. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean Madeira, Madeira is a very North Carolina ingredient when you're talking about like old world North Carolina. Like sure. the people drink it every single day as a like digest tea for a day to yep. like a nightcap. And um, if you get really good Madeira, you you know. You drank it before, you know exactly the flavor profile you're looking for. If you're dealing with a cooking Madeira, something that I try to stray away from when I'm dealing with cooking, you you know how disgusting it can be because it's not done properly. Um, in our tomato gravy, we only use the best Madeira that Dot offers. Um, Stefan can attest to that. I come I to the bar out. two or three times a week and I'm like, hey, I need a pint of Madeira or making <laughs> more tomato gravy. Um, it only makes sense that if you're at a badass cocktail bar that you're utilizing ingredients that they hold so close to themselves as well, using it from the bar side of it. But it sounds to me too, like with Hop and John, with the tomato gravy, with Madeira, this sounds very, so, sounds kind of like a Charleston, like a, like a nod to Charleston a little bit. Am I wrong by saying that? It, it is a nod to Charleston. It is also very, um, very much a nod to who I am as a chef. I am a very... Um, Southern oriented. Most of my cooking career has been spent in the South between Charleston and, you know, Hickory, North Carolina, the place I came from before, working yeah. under various chefs who have spent their time in the low country. However, I consider myself more of a internationally inspired and locally sourced type of chef. Yeah. So we do things like seared ahi tuna, avocado mousse, chili oil, garlic, mm -hmm. uh, aioli, on the menu currently right now, things that are a little bit of an ode to, you know, Japanese or like your your Eastern cuisine. Yeah. We do some Italian stuff, I'm half Italian, so we do a 100-year-old bolognese recipe with a house extruded rigatoni, Whoa. a Parmesan, 
and ricotta ravioli with a mushroom cream, shaved fresh seasonal truffles on top, little chives, super, super simple, flavor forward. Well, wait, 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 you said a 100-year-old recipe for your bolognese. Is this a ground beef? Is this pork? What are you using for your This, this is a locally soy, sourced uh, Joyce Farms beef and oh, yeah. a veal bolognese. Well, we're uh, good, fan, good friends and fans of Joyce Farms. They've been on the show a couple absolutely, times now. Absolutely, and uh, again, PCG, yeah. using as much locally sourced product as you possibly can, and minimalizing waste is what I strive to do every single day at the restaurant, Yeah. whether it comes from the protein or the vegetation that we get in from our farms every single week. I try to use every single piece. By the way, listeners, you hear this little like hum that's happening in the background. We're getting annihilated with some rain right now, and it's, oh, it's great, great because the whole day has been beautiful. It was sunny and bright, no rain and no cloud in the, yep. in the sky at all, and then a hot. it was hot, yeah. <laughs> and the, the food and beverage event stopped, and then boom, the, the, the rain just came hitting down. But let's talk about the event. Let's talk about Chow Chow. Like, we all were there today, so you had a booth, is that, is that right? You were- I, I was on main stage demo doing a couple dishes that Dot has currently on our menu in support of Lady S and Pork, which is a North Carolina product from the Chapel Hill area. Sam Suchoff, although I did talk to some lady earlier today and she said, are you talking about Sam Suckoff? Yeah. Like, I think he means, I think it's Suchoff. <laughs> I think Suck Off uh, might be a different person. <laughs> so Sam, we love you. We love your products. That's awesome. So yeah, so you're folding in Lady Edison Ham into your, into your demo. That's correct. You didn't get nervous speaking in front of a bunch of people out there? I, much like Stefan, I spent probably four years and maybe the greater part of 12 years of my life playing music for a living. I toured for four yeah. years. So being on stage and like being forefront is kind of something that I'm accustomed to. Nice. It's always a little nerve wracking in front of a new crowd. You never really know how things are going to go. Different equipment, things like that, could completely and totally wreck your demo when it comes to cooking. But uh, overall, it was a good response. Everybody yeah. seemed to like the tasty little nibbles that we put out today, and I feel like it went off pretty, pretty flawlessly. Our friend Heidi was up there emceeing, so makes it of, yeah. makes, makes it a little uh, more Heidi's, comfortable. Yeah. You got that good friend up there with you. So. Heidi's great. Chad Blackwell from uh, Department of Ag is always super yeah. cool. They, These are they good keep people. the. Yeah. They keep the conversation flowing while I'm trying to do my thing and cook and plate things up and make them look pretty so that when they get passed around, people are like, oh, I get what this oh, is. This is nice. Picture, your picture. <laughs> Instagrammable. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, Stefan, let's talk to me about Asheville a little bit. I mean, being that you're in Charlotte, I have to think that you probably venture to Asheville fairly often. You're a little bit closer than we are, and, and there's really no excuse that Matt and I haven't made it to Asheville. Uh, but, I mean, I've passed through a few times on my way to Tennessee or, or, or such, and I've loved it in very small bites. But I'm here for a four-day weekend, and I'm really going to indulge. I've, I've already had a good night the night before. But tell me, like, what's your Asheville? What do you think of when you're going to Asheville? What's it all about? I love this town because, A, they do every, there are so many bars that do great cocktails at an un, like a such unpretentious level yeah you can just go into like the grimiest dive bar and order an old-fashioned and it's gonna be good yeah um there's some people in town doing great great stuff um what i love about Asheville compared to charlotte is like you could just be fucking weird here and it's like <laughs> like no my, cares. My, like they, it's my friend phoebe literally has opened an amaro bar inside double crown that's open for like three hours a day yeah. like if you try to do that in Charlotte, you'd be out of business in like six weeks. Yeah. Like it just doesn't work. Here, it's like, oh, that sounds cool. Let's go do that. Felicia um, would uh, hate me to know that I'd say this out loud, but as we were walking out to the event today, we got halfway there. It was kind of point of no return. And she goes, oh, shit, I forgot to put deodorant on. And I said, it's all good. You're in Asheville. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's I like, love you, Asheville. I'm not making fun, but like yeah. it, it's very uh, earthy here. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. you have, uh, I mean, you just have like, Great bars like Golden Pineapple and Sovereign Remedies, oh, Imperial yeah. Life. Like my favorite is like Crow and Quill. Yeah, no like sign that. on the door, just a huge whiskey list, and it's just like no pretension whatsoever. Yeah, you're like lucky if the bartender had sleeves on their shirt. Uh, <laughs> it's just like such a cool bar and such a cool vibe. Always like great music going on in Crow and Quill. The most important part is five dollars. You get a tall boy PBR and a shot of freaking old crow. Like, <laughs> yeah. that. And, I mean, yeah. like, well, you man, you mentioned uh, Sovereign Remedies, and we saw Charlie Hodge last night uh, because Chow Chow. We were out in, and that's Charlie's place, yeah. Sovereign Remedies. 
And he goes, I was like, so what's been going on, man? He's like, well, actually, I'm opening a whole new place today. But he's opening, he just opened up the Asheville Beauty Academy. And we went there last night. It was opening night. There was a live jazz band. Apparently, it used to be a jazz club for years and years and years. And then eventually, I guess it closed down. And he was able to reinvigorate it and keep jazz going. Because when we went there, there was a house band that was killing it. They did an awesome rendition of Benny and the Jets, like <laughs> jazz style. <laughs> And, uh, and it was great. And to the same point, I went to the bar. They didn't have a cocktail list. It was like, I didn't know how to think about that. I wonder how you think about that. A bar that doesn't have a cocktail menu. It's like, I know because I'm, I'm a drinker and I'm also a bartender. I know what to order because I know what I like. But if you don't know anything and you don't have a list in front of you, you're like, what the hell am I going to do here? Like, you know what? I, I think our guests are a lot smarter than they were five years ago. As a bar owner, I want a cocktail list. I can guide yeah. people into the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> making me profits. Right. You know, because uh, that's, like, you know, those buy are. Buy the $13 cocktail that I crafted from you, then just not knowing what to do and ordering a Miller Lite. Yes. Yeah. That's we, what I want. Um, that's, for the most part, that's what we do. We have 24 cocktails, but we're covering 12 classics that, you know, the majority of bars don't even put the classics on their on their menu anymore. Right. It's like, we understood. Yeah, yeah. We are proud of being a classic cocktail bar. Yeah. That is what we do. I think we do classics better than anybody else. Ours are all have been R and D'd. They're all perfect. Yeah. I can say in two and a half years we've never had a cocktail on the house side come back. Right. Oh you like mean, I, I'm, on, the, on the on the classic side come right. back. Like people are just like, wow. Or like, this is the best old fashioned. Well no, that's yeah. what an old fashioned's supposed to taste like. Yeah. I want a corpse survivor if you're gonna make the best, best it's corpse survivor. survivor you've ever had. Yeah. You know, exactly. we've gone through the different recipes to get us to that point. And that's that what that's sense. what our guys that's what our guys and girls behind the bar every single night have strived to do every single day of their career. And Stefan has sought out the best bartenders and the best mixologists in the industry. Any one of our bartenders could leave Dot Today and run a bar program that would decimate Charlotte in every <laughs> single way, but they choose to stay at Dot because they know that we do the best ingredients, the best cocktails, they have creative freedom, and honestly, our clientele there is some of the best in the city. So yeah. they, just, they just keep coming back. They're like they the say, Golden State Warriors. Yeah, you got absolutely. All the, all the power players. <laughs> yeah. no, no, matter, no matter what you say, I can tell any one of my bartenders every single night, and I can be like, yo, make me, I want something with gin, I want something sweet and slightly acidic. It can be a different spirit every single night, a different parameter, and I swear to God, there is never one time that I'm disappointed. Yeah, and, and I mean, our four of them, that. and four of them have been there since day one, wow. and our fifth one has been over there a year now. That's... So like, we just have zero turnover. Everybody like, I have super for professionals there, and like things that they could go run their own programs. All of them. yeah, that's a, but that's they a they want to be created though because it's a culture that speaks volumes. I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess it comes from the top down, but it also is really into like hiring process and really without a doubt. people. And like you got to know what they want. You, you don't always want the best person too. You want the best person for your team. Yeah, we you employ, know it's we employ that in the back. Of the yeah, house you know like, I could have like you know we've had multiple Charlotte star tender kind of people sure. come available to come work at Dot. Passed on a lot of them because they don't fit what we need for our piece of the pie. I I treat our back our bartenders like a recipe. Sure. If it's all sugar, everybody's teeth right. You know, you need flour, butter, sugar. You know, you need it all to make the cake. The salt, with the, yeah, 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 you know? yeah, yeah. That speaks volumes, right? Like you, you hire a good team. You you get solidified, and it's not about the individuals. I like that you said, like it's not about the star tender. It's not about the guy that a gal that has a huge Instagram following. That does help. Yeah, that's cool, but that's bonus. That's bonus material. It's more can you come on and and vibe with everybody and understand what we're doing? You know, you're talking about. You also don't want five people who are all into the same thing, because then like that yeah. guest who comes in, if they're not into that, they're just like I'm bored. I don't know. Like so, yeah. you try to get people who are into all different, like into art, into music, into sports. Like everybody kind of has their right. own little vibe. So when like they might sit in front of me and then I realize, hey, they're like not into what I like, I'll send, hey, Andrew, go go talk to them for a little bit. Yeah. And then they have this great experience. They wouldn't have had that experience if they just sat in front of me. Right. And, and it's being smart to kind of, it's like to shuffle your people around it, put the best person 
in front of the guest that needs that experience. It's another yeah. sports analogy, just like the Oakland, Oakland Athletics, but it's money ball. Yeah. Like you yeah. find you find you find Small the best ball. player yeah. for that specific position that is going to continue to put out quality day after day after day and wants to learn and yeah. wants to be the best version of themselves. Work the and averages. Then you, yes. let them, you let them yeah. shine. You work the averages. And at the end of the day, two years later, there's a reason that Dot is voted the best cocktail bar in Charlotte two years in a row. All there's right. a, there's yeah. a reason why that our food program is one of the best in the business. I mean, we continue to strive every single day to be better than we were yesterday. We hire people that have extensive backgrounds and other aspects. Everybody that works for me may have not been in the type of cuisine that I that I put forward. And I learn from them every day and they learn from me every day. The work ethic yeah. is unmatched. We, we continue to come in every single day, day in and day out, and we put in our best that we can every day. And that's why... Our clientele that comes in regularly every single week puts us on the top level because we I, we want to make them happy. Right, because who cares how big or small the town is? If you can connect to people, then everyone should know that person's name. Because in New York, you could have some you know fancy celebrity chef, but in the end, it's still just the guy in the kitchen. Everybody the knows kitchen. David Chang, and nobody and David Chang doesn't know who the hell you are. Yeah. Right, I, I, but I they might say like, yeah. "Can David come out here and talk?" And he's still a human, and he'll he's, come out. He's he's in L.A. He's not <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's at Major like, Domo. I, yeah. I, I, I want to I want to know every single person that comes in the dot. I want to know their wife's name. I want to know their kid's name. I want to know how. Yeah, that's because you're creepy, though. That's, I mean, creepy <laughs> as it may. Like I want to. Build, I, want, I, want to that, I want to build a relationship. With I need you. to know your home address. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, com- I'm coming to your birthday dinner. Yeah. Like, like, I want you to. Oh, know I'm going to be your kid's birthday party. I want your shoe size, bro. Yeah. yeah. Like, can, can, we, can we share? Yeah, I got I got some nice yeah. keens right here. For you, um, I just like I want to I want to know I want to know our clientele. I want to know what makes them tick. I want to know what's going to yeah. bring them back. Like I want to have that relationship. I said it. I say it too when I train people at restaurants, and I've said it like in you know articles I've written. Uh, restaurants can't know enough about their guests. Like it behooves us to know as much as possible at, about what's happening. So, so people, when you're making reservations and there's a little note at the bottom, when you're making like an open table mm-hmm. reservation or so, tell us what the hell's going on. Like we are coming because it's uh, my, my uncle birthday. got released from prison for 20 years. <laughs> and he wants this goddamn burger that he wants. Like it, this would be really good information for us to know because if that guy hadn't had this burger in 20 years and he just got out of prison, but then, by God, we're going to make that thing awesome. And if him. you come to Dot and we have a burger on the menu and you just got out of prison, it's going to come in a fucking cage. So you <laughs> break the son of a bitch. <laughs> okay? you, you are, your freedom is set. You hear that, felons? <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's kind of just like the whole idea with hospitality. It's just, just it include everything. Right? It's like personality. Let it all, let there's, it all be There's apart. nobody in... I've, I've done a lot of research in my time in the hospitality industry. There's nobody that does hospitality better than Disney. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you couldn't work that with that beer okay. at Disney. No, no, no. no Disney, Disney would tell me that shade. tattoo ain't going to shine. No, it's, yeah. not, it's not, especially this one right here. Yeah, yeah. Like, nah, you're, you're good. But in, in, in reality, they know exactly what makes people happy, which is why they have a multi-billion dollar company. And right. I try to implore that every single day. Yeah. They do that because every single person that walks through a Disney door in any way, shape, or form, they make feel like family. And that's what it is when you come to die. You feel like family. It's awesome. Whether you're coming in to get shwasted or whether you're coming in to celebrate <laughs> a, a, a birthday, yeah. you're going to be taken care of. You're going to be made to feel like family. And I love it, that's man. what it's about. Yeah. Can't be said better. Uh, gents, lady. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. This is great. I hope it's everybody pleasure. else has enjoyed. If you haven't gone to dot, 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 if you are either from Charlotte, you're around, you're traveling, you're coming in, that's where you gotta go. Like it's don't worry about this whole private club nonsense. You just come right in. Like they're gonna take your ID. We'll get you, you signed up at the door and it's you'll be set about, ready to go. It's just a bar like the way any other bar is. It's just a formality that happens in North Carolina. North so. Carolina is backhanded in every single <laughs> bar they <laughs> have. So we, we love it. It's fine. <laughs> we gotta follow we gotta follow suit. We'll it's get you fine. in. You'll be happy. It's, it's getting better. It's, yeah. It's worth it. I promise it's, it's worth it. It's a cover you pay for 365 days to go in. It's like yeah. who cares? So uh so anyhow, if you get a chance to get out there, as Matthew Weiss would say, you will eat, you will drink merrily at dot 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 so everybody thank you so much yeah man thank you for having us man this was great cool all right we're out thanks for listening to the nc fnb podcast and if you've stuck with us this long review us on itunes and remember five stars are encouraged